Sako, Chief Executive Officer of the, uh, the Food and Drugs Authority. Chambers, Chambers endorses petty tough a pretty tough measures against Galam Singh. And Mali suspended from ECOWAS. as Ekufuado urges leaders to help restore democracy. Uh, Kenel Goita there, he's uh, taking over the country. Abalora saves Kotoko at Doma and Legon City's shock ash gold at Obwasi. I know you're talking about Chelsea. Well, Chelsea's not here. Republic Press. We are not only burning equipment. Operation Halt has arrested 45 people. According to Godfrey Dummy, as a justification for the burning of excavators continue. Education Ministry to establish front decks to address concerns of teachers. And Brian Champon Foundation donates two units KG classroom to Ko Akuma. Uh, Banner headline Eku Fuado replies Sam Jonah says no culture of silence in Ghana. Well, how long did it take? Uh, GMA warns Confadachi Teaching Hospital Kolebu over lab scientist strike. And also robbers kill Karaga DCE's driver. Sad one there. The Daily Analyst. Um, 148,000 Ghana City scandal hits Gomoa Achimpim. Also, hope at last 13 missing kids to reunite with their families following a Tega TV's documentary. Uh, Adongo reveals, um, unveils vampires at the finance ministry. An evil plot against Deputy Minister nominee backfires. Who's the Deputy Minister? Matsuri J. Corsa, Deputy Minister designated for Local Government and Rural Development. The Today newspaper. After brutal assault on City FM journalists, gang of four reassigned. And uh, I'm sure you heard about Kenel, uh, Lieutenant Kenel Poku at the 64 Infantry Battalion. Well, Azugo is going back to the uh, operations unit of the Ghana Police Service. Did anything change? That's the question people are asking. Social media necessary evil, according to a lawyer. The Ghanaian Times. Mali's political crisis. ECOWAS leaders commit to peaceful resolution at today's extraordinary meeting in Accra, chaired by a president in another Dankwe Kufuado. Police chase killers of Karaga DC's driver, 1,000 rendered homeless by tidal waves at Imketu South, and free SHS uh, revered decades of exclusion, President Kufuado. There's also the countdown to the Green Ghana days, 11 days to that big day. Uh, good morning to you, Nana. Uh, Osei Aldakwa of the Green uh, Republic. Rising fuel prices, new taxes likely to keep policy rates static. Analysts as inflation uh, forecast remains gloomy. Government must act on ENI Springfield unitization now, IES. And you know that it's been more than a year since government asked the ENI and uh, um, what do you call it, the Springfield to go and solve that matter. They have not done it. Maybe it's time for the uh, energy minister to get in there. FDA sustains anti-tobacco education in schools, public places, and 2021 census data will improve livelihoods, according to President Akufado, as he launched a 30-day countdown last Friday. Daily guide. Petition hits Corsa appointment. He dismisses Spira's claim. Chief fights MCE for over court summons. And Nana rejects culture of silence. ECOWAS leaders in Mali. Uh, crisis. Okay, Ajina. Chiefs chase VRA officer over failed uh, promises. What's the final one? The Finder newspaper. GCB Bank records 610 million, uh, 0.83 million profit before tax for uh, 2020. Government must act on ENI Springfield unitization directive to protect its interest. Also, culture of silence claims are without basis, according to the president. And free SHS has reversed decades of exclusion and has enhanced access and quality. President Ekufuado. GMA demands restoration of laboratory physicians forced. Uh, out to work and uh, Oko Eko has uh, committed to ending crisis in Mali according to Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado. My guest in studio this morning is Mr. Elikem Kotoko. He is a member of the NDC's uh, communication team. Also, Mr. Richard Ahiagba is uh, the executive director of the Dankwa Institute. They are joining me in studio this morning. Gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. How are you doing? Doing very good. Morning. Morning. Sure. Good morning. Richard, it's been a long time. Quite a long Where time. have you been hiding? Oh, I've been around. Hmm? I've been busy watching the MT. Ellie, can you? Uh, we can't complain that much. Uh, mm. All is not so well, but we cannot also be pessimistic, so mm. still very optimistic. Okay, I like that. You must be optimistic, or you like to be a pessy optimist. <laughs> Probably, a blend <laughs> of the two. <laughs> Happy birthday to... Avia Nyamiche Saki, this is from your mom and dad, 
and the entire family, they wish you happy birthday. Also to Mr. Daniel Kossi Dunyo at uh, Daroski. That's what they call you. It's uh, your birthday today. Happy birthday from all your brothers, sisters, and entire Dunyo and its allied families. Happy birthday to you. And a special good morning to Mr. Francis Da of the Akachi Government Hospital, a.k.a. Odogono. Good morning to you. Kim Padua. Good morning to you as well. Let's begin, um, Richard, with you on, on this one. There's a um, growing concern of the medical laboratory scientists on strike. They have raised a couple of issues. One, to suggest that they have people who are qualified to, to run the roles that the doctors are being asked to come and run at the labs. It started small at the Confanochi Teaching Hospital. We watched night has ballooned to everywhere in the country. And they are saying that until you take the two doctors off at the Confanochi Teaching Hospital, we will not go back to work. Lives are at stake and people are complaining of the exorbitant rates that private labs are charging. But it takes the Minister for Health to make the decision. And they are saying it rests with him. What should we do? Uh, thank you, Johnny, and uh, good morning to my brother. I, <clears throat> and to your viewers, it's been a, such a long time. Mm. Um, I'm not quite sure uh, how I feel about this, mm. but it's it, because apart from your emotions mm -hmm. and the outrage mm -hmm. uh, that you know patients are suffering, uh, the striking workers or the uh, the lab technicians or mm -hmm. physicians mm -hmm. uh, have uh, seeming uh, legitimate concerns to do with protecting their professional turf. Mm -hmm. And so the, you wonder if in the intersection of all these interests, it makes sense mm -hmm. to have the patient uh, suffer mm -hmm. who is called for none of this. Uh, but what I think uh, in the midst of all this is allowing the laws and our systems to work. I think that NLC is secured some injunction. Yeah, uh, to, Exactly, to have, uh, mm. to have these uh, striking workers go back to work. Mm. And I, th I think that they should adhere to that, go to work and have dialogue, then address what the outstanding issues are. I think that's, that's where the, I, the I, I'll The argument is that, look, each time this comes up, they are told to go back to work, we'll fix it, and nothing happens. And they say they see a certain plan to yank them off. So it starts from the teaching hospitals, comes to the regional hospitals, comes to the district hospitals, and then trickles down. So once it starts there, nobody's talking about it. Before you know, everybody's coming. And they have PhD holding people who could actually be bosses at those labs, but they are not being given the chance to hold them. And they think that's unfair. Yeah, Johnny, there's, there's a way we can talk about this thing, that, this thing very, uh, in, in terms that sounds as though you are not being sensitive. But we all need to be sensitive to one group of people, mm. and that's our patients. Uh, the doctor has a job, the physicians and which other classification they are have a job because there's a patient to be attended to. And if the patient is caught in a limbo mm -hmm. because they are fighting their uh, respective professional turf, I'm wondering who their priority is. Mm. And so I think that they should adhere to what order has been secured and insist. And all of us who participate in the conversation to ensure what is being done disorderly to disadvantage them can be looked at and then we'll have uh, you know, some semblance of peace mm. in, in, the, in the sector. I see. Elika, what's, what's on your mind regarding this uh, matter? Yeah, Johnny, thank you. Uh, good morning to our viewers. And on, on this matter, I, one cannot take a position of being indifferent uh, because at the mention of the situation at hand, lives are at risk. And only God knows how many lives have been lost so far as a result of this impasse. Uh, at the bottom of it is that we should be certain and be sure that our actions do not infringe on others as well. But you see, I think there's been too much talk even around this with little action. How and, do you mean? And I mean, uh, the silence of the sector minister also is a major concern mm. because the back stops at his door. Uh, if these things are going on, and uh, these are some administrative uh, probably malpractices that are ongoing, which the the lab technicians or the lab, how are they called? The lab technicians, mm, right? The lab technicians, uh, right. Feel that uh, there's been some deliberate machination mm. aimed at yanking them off in one way or the other. And so they have spoken well on this. Mm -hmm. I think it's about time action is taken. Uh, <laughs> it be looked into. And, you know, they also raised the concern that the NLC... 
uh, or there's been instances where uh, they raise concerns and they are only told, oh, get back to work and then, but you see, when the NLC also begins to take a certain position as though, okay, we'll use every legal means possible to forestall or to make that process not go on, mm -hmm. it becomes very confrontational. And so they would also want to prove a point that, hey, okay, you have gone to say, an injunction, but maybe we also have other ways to go around it. They can be like a decical on the job. They can, they can do much more. So some of these things go beyond just thinking that I can do this more to frustrate you or to hold you to ransom or one or the other. Because these are genuine reasons, concerns they are raising. I mean, it will make it will only not make logic to somebody who has a hidden agenda. Mm -hmm. And that is really one of the things they are, the concerns they are raising. And this is uh, like work politics. Mm -hmm. I think that it's time the sector minister uh, realized the need to, to, to make the proper, get the proper briefing mm -hmm. and act right in order to forestall this looming danger. As you said rightly, it is already starting to be a nationwide it exercise a nationwide now. Thing, so. And it is no more just comfort noche. So you can imagine, COVID is already ravaging us. And with this, it will just worsen our situation. OK, Rich, let's, uh, last Friday, the president launched um, the, the countdown for the 2021 census. We know that it will come on on the 13th of June. I would want you this morning to speak with your people in a language they understand, to tell them to avail themselves for their properties to be enumerated and also for them to make themselves available. Because learning from 2010, we got an education that some people, because of some cultural practices and for whatever reason, did not make themselves available to be counted. I don't know. So I'd want you to use this platform to tell the people in a language they understand to allow themselves to be counted and for their properties to be enumerated. Okay. Well, I uh, about <clears throat> aba ale mi enya na apoji mu ada pan ka kawire kagba en kongo ngoro la gana jivaga ma to kukura da ma bana en kongo la uva ya wodo plo bana en kongo ngoro na yiji la miada alaba ma chama ila fma ponko na gada en kongo balama bana mi okay elegi yeah. want to add something i uh, know it's the same channel it's the same channel <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but as GBC Radio Two, <laughs> GBC Radio Two. Yeah, I, I, I think it's true. Uh, but you know, there's been one major concern that has been raised, and which has got to do with the Volta region, where the the people of the Volta have been more classified as one with okay. one dialect, where uh, there okay. are a lot so, of other languages so, spoken. So I spoke with uh, Professor Inim mm -hmm. of the Statistical Services, a yes. government statistician. Yes. He mentioned that it's been the practice mm -hmm. since the early days since year, uh, what do you call it, 2000, year 2010, that has been the structure of putting everybody together in that, in that, uh, in that light. Because in fact, in the analysis, those uh, sub-ethnic groups are not looked at. So it's always been the practice, something that he came to meet and they are maintaining it. However, I know that the, the persons raising the concerns have written a petition he says there are consultations ongoing. He has met the uh, Voter Regional House of Chiefs yeah. in that direction. So let's allow them to, to try and fix that, you know, on, on that level, so that people don't start getting a certain kind of wrong indication to, to start, I, I, before I, I, we start doing firefighting. Yeah, I hope it yields fruit. And secondly, also, that we should not hold a certain view that that has been the practice that makes it right. Mm. And so, well, uh, Miata for Gotoma Dog Banamin dear. Obamiana Miakatami and Yabe Le Affair of Jimua Dagba, and Kakawi de Kayama, or Jen Kongongo, Ne Dwarfer, Ngoyi Le Nyaha Helma. I'm Kongongo, Nyawa, and you cook on a beer when you have a more of a Kongola of Amasham of a former. I'm Yafa Dorfo, Angum Alba Miakatam Yang, Yafanko, Abala, or near for wood, a share, and now. If I buy you more, or we are committing judge you. A yova or a la fire, my Miakatami, Jagbanamia, a dashi, a tenor, or now. Akbanami. Akbeka kaka kaka. Okay. Page 15 of the Ghanaian Times talks about a thousand people who have been rendered homeless by tidal waves in the Ketu South 
constituency. I saw Abla Jifa Gomashi Mamaga uh, out there. She's the MP for the area out there. We have sent reporters out there, but we want to have that conversation because as far back as 2015, I heard of that thing as well. Somebody sent it to me on Community Connect. Now it's gotten out of hand. So about 1,000 people in Salakope, Amutinu, and Agaveji in the Ketu, Munici Ketu South Municipality of the Volta region have been re displaced when tidal waves submerged their homes on Saturday. The Municipal Director of NADMO, Mr. Paul Alosede, told the Ghanaian Times on phone that the ravaging sea has buried more than 20 houses. What began as a usual tidal wave invasion in the morning rapidly turned into a complete and ruthless assault by the sea with no space for any form of relief, said Mr. Alosode. According to him, many of the displaced people have trooped to Agbozume and Jetagba in hope of finding refuge. Richard, this is home, and the people are, are crying that their shelter is being eaten away by the sea. What hope is there for them? Well, uh, it's, very, um, it's very painful, and this thing has been carrying on. Uh, it's one of those um, nature's uh, undertaking that uh, you wish didn't happen. Mm. But then, of course, um, a lot has been done uh, over the years to try to reclaim the land. Uh, I think this would have been uh, 2018. Mm. Uh, myself and the MC, uh, the current uh, the uh, MC for Ketu South, okay. uh, Elio Tagbono, I went with him and some of the, the team. We mm. toured the place um, and saw uh, the devastation. And at the time, he, he's been working mm. uh, with authorities to try to advance the sea defense. You know, the defense system has worked all the way from Keta coming mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. And so it needs to carry on. Um, along uh, the stretch where we're having these challenges. So uh, I'm aware by that tour mm -hmm. uh, back in 2018, I, I think my memory serves me right then, um, that there's efforts underway to try to um, make sure that the place uh, is secured. Mm -hmm. And I hope that these uh, recent happenings there will, will cause for the acceleration of that mm -hmm. effort to, to make sure that uh, we bring some peace uh, the, the people are demonstrating already. They are blocking the streets with coconut tree trunks. And they say they are demanding for immediate response from government to salvage their communities that are along the, you know, ancestral homes. You come from there, so no, I don't need to, no, no, to no, school no. you on, I I, on, I, I, on what's happening. But yeah. they say ancestral homes are being ruined. Yeah. Their livelihoods are being taken away from them. And it appears that there's no commitment to get them help. And that's why they are, they are on, on that uh, Absolutely. I mean, when citizens um, are in distress, they look to their government for support and, mm. and uh, interventions. So that is, that is a justified sentiment. And if you go to the area, uh, not only are the ancestral homes, as they talk about, uh, mm. being eaten up by the sea, uh, but it's also um, the, the burial grounds mm -hmm. and, and things that literally you see that they, you can see from when you go there and they show you can see mm. f far in the sea mm -hmm. where the, the, the houses used to be. Right. And so on account of that, I mean, there isn't any, any uh, second guessing what, what uh, situation they are in and to say whether or not they can wait today or tomorrow. Mm. But what we need to also understand is not uh, to be grandstanding uh, in this moment, mm. but rather uh, be conciliatory and then engage in, in, in ways that allow for dialogue and allow for constructive searching of solution mm -hmm. to be able to address the, the issue. So um, demonstration, if you want to, is, is there a possible way out? I don't think that is effective. You can do that, but what is effective is what the MC was doing, which I joined him back then to do, is to try to see what means do we have and what resources can we apply to this so that we can solve the problem more sustainably. Um, so I think that that is the path to go, engage and see what uh, we can do together mm. uh, to fix uh, the situation there. So I, I will not endorse demonstration because it really it just takes your eye off the ball and, uh, and, and just really don't give you much. Mm. You can do that all day, but what we need to do is to dialogue and to constructively look at how we can fix the problem together. I am planning to go, go to the area, there. yes, okay. probably later on today. Okay, great. Uh, Elikem, the folks at Agaveji are, are asking for 
their lives to be preserved, their homes as well. Yeah. What do you say as an indigent? Yes, uh, I think it's most unfortunate the happenings over there. Uh, it's unfortunate it brings to my memory somewhere um, in 2020, or if you recall, uh, all over social media there was uh, this particular picture of the sea defense extension under the regime of mm. uh, the NPP, which was apparently a stolen project from, was it Singapore, or one of the countries that was displayed mm. as images of what was happening there, progress that was ongoing there. It is why it is very unfortunate that we would have uh, people of the regime not be very truthful to the citizenry or to the governed, because uh, governance is a continuum. Mm -hmm. It is expected that as your predecessor left, where you felt that he fell short or there is need mm -hmm. for continuation, I am sure you agree with me that had this been continued to that level, that mm -hmm. would have been the master stroke that would secure the people and, and would have avoided what we find them in at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, it has become too much talk and less work, which is very worrying because uh, it's been, we are in the fifth year of a new regime. What has been the situation? What has been your consideration? What have you identified as the challenges there? Mm -hmm. What have you continued? Why has pro projects stalled? and all that. So there's need for my brother's government to, to sit up. The talking has not helped much because uh, everybody can do the same. It is oh. the action that will even do the talking for you. If you put yourself into action, mm -hmm. uh, it will do the talking for you. It, it's, it's, it's very instructive to even say that he is even from oh. that constituency in particular. And I know that it will mean a lot to him, but that oh. is not enough. He needs to push for his government to make sure that they, they, they solve this challenge and stop the peddling of falsehoods on social media as progress on some of these projects when actually mm -hmm. it's been stored. Because mm -hmm. it again brings to mind, Johnny, mm -hmm. uh, a significant one also at, uh, uh, is it Keji? Mm -hmm. the, Keji. The, 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 the Ghana Ports and Harbor mm -hmm. Authority premise over there. I was there about a month ago. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a white elephant that has been placed there, especially leading to the elections. Uh, they hurriedly put up some five containers that have over 13 air conditioners mm -hmm. uh, fixed up on them, and nothing has happened there since. And there's not been any budgetary allocation. So it mm -hmm. tells you there's some deliberate attempt to hoodwink the people into believing that we care about you, we want to do this, but that is not the case. And so the plight of the people this morning is very mm -hmm. worrying, because mm -hmm. you can imagine what it will feel like to, to be homeless. You, you wake up in the morning and the tidal waves have just taken I'm, you off. I'm informed now that relief items have not been sent to the people. It is why it is all, that is why it is all worrying. I'm just getting fresh information. You see, it is very worrying because, uh, you see, you are tempted to say certain things that sometimes you are told, oh, that is too extreme. There have been instances where within the twinkle of an eye, there has been very rapid response. So why is it that there are some delays under some of these circumstances? And, and when there have been some narratives that suggest a certain posturing, then you are confident that it could be even deliberate to, 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 to frustrate I, them. I, I don't to, want to believe but that. But I don't want to believe that mm. too. You see, because what matters most is to find the best way to resolve these matters. Mm. This has been very perennial. And so when the waves or the tides are high, we know this happens. It was one of the major reasons why the sea defense uh, war was being built. Mm. And so there's a need to build boulders that would break these waves in order to ensure. If there's need to extend relocation, as was done, in our, our time where mm. people were relocated to a place and mm. given decent accommodation, mm -hmm. if that has to be done. And so my, 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 my sincere uh, uh, concerns are mm. about the people there and, and, I, and I, I, I wish them well. I hope that the government will do the needful and mm. act right in time. Okay, well, good morning to you, Honorable Ablaji Fagomashi. You are the MP for the area. I know that there's uh, pressure on you at this point. Your people are looking forward. But, Richard, can we trust you to make a call to get relief to the police? No, I think uh, <clears throat> just a quick intervention. Yeah, I think, I mean. Uh, no, no, I, I want you to answer my question first. Reliefs first, and then you can do the rebuttal if you wish. No. Can, can I trust you to make a call? Yeah, yeah, my brother in well, power. Well, yeah. right, right now, no, it's, there's nothing like being in power. <laughs> power. It's our government. You're, you're, you're closer to power. <laughs> no, I don't think so. We're all closer to power. And in fact, <laughs> we, we are being served by power. Okay. And so we are in charge, if you like. But you the, have not the, responded to my question. I will. I'm, I will answer. No. The, the point Can I trust you to make a call to get relief items for the people?
whose homes have been swept away by tidal waves? That's what I'm asking first. Then you can do the rebuttal. The, the reason I can't answer your question is that this government doesn't believe in special treatment. You know nobody anyone. who you can make a call uh, to? No, I'm just saying that government doesn't believe in special treatment for people. It does things for citizens equally. There's a system that should deliver that relief service. Okay. We, your call here should activate that system to work. I do. I there know. Shouldn't be, there shouldn't be any jump-starting of the system at one I'm point not ask, in favor. I'm not asking you to jump-start, my brother. Yeah. So I'm, so I'm you, saying that. As an, you an, as an indigent, yeah. I'm saying that. Are I you able saying, to call I somebody? I am saying that. No, well, we're making a call. Head here. of Dankwa Institute. No. You can't make a call to say the people of Agaveji have not, have not gotten relief items since Saturday or Friday when this broke and they are hanging. Can you turn your attention to them. You can make a call. I think because I can make that call. So if you, then you, can't, I appreciate. If you can't make the call. Yeah, I appreciate to I'm, say. I'll be shocked. I'm saying that right now as we speak, if mm. something else happens in somewhere in Jabbing, in somewhere in... Uh, I'll call on you in, again in, to make in, that in Tamale call. East, Tamale Central somewhere. The system must be relied I'll upon. I'll call on you to make that yeah, call. I'm, I'm, I, I would appreciate <laughs> that. See, the system must be relied on to work. So NADMO must activate. And that's the call we must make. It's, it's, it's unfortunate that probably right by now, it's nothing is gone to the people. We're saying that NADMO must do its job. My singular mm. position always is that mm. if we allow the system to work, mm -hmm. everybody will be served equally and right. But you see, Johnny, there's, there's an important thing that we must understand. You see, I hear my brothers from the other side talk mm -hmm. loosely sometimes and make this thing sound as if it's, 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 it's fun, mm. right? Mm. He's talking about hoodwinking people. And, and posturing to make the people think you care about them. Mm. Who is talking? Who is talking and saying those things? Mm. You see, I, I, I don't, because our people are in distress and we, I don't want us to sit here. Fortunately, we're all from the same place. To sit here and be doing people's politics. Okay? It's unfortunate. Mm. The issue along the sea, the way it's going, if you want to, Continue, and which was the problem when we went there to assess the situation? In 2018. Mm. 2018. The process is that because it was done from the Keta side coming, it's mm. shifting downward. Mm. So if you want to do it, which is the scope of the work, is actually endless. Mm -hmm. You have to continue to do all the way and end up in Togo, and they will have to continue from that end. Mm. That is my understanding of the assessment. Mm. So it's a massive pro project that is being discussed, and they are going to work on it. So my thinking is that when we have a situation like this, mm. let's be reasonable and constructive and see the burden and what work is being done to fix it. it, it let's it, not is, do is this. Frustration, is this frustration not genuine to an extent that promise was made, the promise has not been kept, the people are now under the ravaging effect of COVID-19, border has been closed since forever, their livelihoods depend on activities along the border, now their homes are being watched, possibly their businesses and their livelihood. So maybe he's injecting emotions into it, but that is what the people feel. Because I could play for you the tip of a report from the area. No. And, and, and you, you'll be drenched in your own sweat that the people really are suffering and they're asking for immediate help. Johnny, I am drenched in emotions before I came here. Mm. So I'm not going to be drenched in emotions on TV. As we sit here, I'm testing and chatting with people. The point I am making... Asking for relief? <laughs> updating what is happening. Okay. You understand? You see, the person and the group of people who are think, uh, talking about this and acting as though they are holy and they just popped out mm -hmm. from space, these are people, when they were in government, neglected the people in that place. Mm -hmm. So I am, I am here trying to say I'm not interested mm -hmm. in engaging their failure in the Volta region. I'm not interested in that. I'm saying that in this present time, in this hour, where people are in distress, I want us to focus and deal with that. But unfortunately, how, how are we to they, deal they, with they, it? they've sent a rep here in the studio how are we who dealing is with just that? busy. How are we going dealing to be, with that? Going to be, sorry? How are we dealing with that? That's, I just told you. Hmm. I just told you. And, and we've read together here, activated NADMO to be able to uh, you know, expedite it processes to make sure people Should get we released? be activating NADMO before they active? They visited the place. They have given us a fine report. Mm. They have not it, sent relief. But I'm just saying, no, I'm just saying that, you see, that you have to understand mm. that whatever the situation is right now mm -hmm. is the weakness of a system we have created in a sense that you hear 
most of these disasters especially happen across this country. Mm -hmm. There will be days and hours before NADBO shows up. Mm. Okay? So we all have collective responsibility to ensure that institutions work. And in fact, I was going to give you credit uh, when, before I started speaking, when mm. you talked about people going to work today and working in the interest of this country. That's right. That is a mindset we must bring to everything we do. Mm. Is uh, the people at NADMO, are they working to that spirit? And that is what will define 24 hours later, people don't have relief. This has nothing to do with government. Mm. This has everything the, the to, do with, the to do with government. The sea defense war has nothing to do with government. In those, sorry. The sea defense war has nothing to do with government. I'm talking about the relief. Let, the, let's the relief, let's focus yeah. on the matter. Okay. You understand? So, if the people who are in that those institutions finds it their job mm. and working to the interest of this country, I think by now we should have had those those relief. Okay. Let, it, let's it, go on to the tele. Look, I'm, I'll come to you. Let's speak with the honourable member of parliament for the area, former deputy minister for uh, culture, tourism, and creative arts, Abla Jifa Gomashi. Good morning. How are you? How are you doing? It could be better, but I'm blessed to be alive. How are you? Well, I'm greater than Accra. Um, <laughs> hey, wow. <laughs> I'm reading in the papers, and in fact, we've sent uh, reporters there to assess the situation at the Agaveji area and, and some communities as well. Their shelter has been eaten away. You visited the area. I want your first, uh, first hand report on this matter as you saw it. Thank you very much, Johnny, and uh, let me applaud TV3 for bringing this up this morning. Um, I recall that uh, 2017, I was in the community with uh, Onabo Atachia when mm. the same thing happened, and um, all the houses that we saw together um, today are not there. Um, we have just less than maybe 10 meters for the sea to completely take the road. And that will include the electric, electric poles, the water. So it's not just the houses. It's not just the, the, the people losing their property. It's also the stake losing the investment that we have made on that road. And that's the only link between Aplau and Qatar. Mm. Um, it's, it's depressing. It's devastating. Um, these are the same people who can't find... The, their livelihood because the borders have been closed for March of last year. So already they were on their knees, and then now they have to deal with the sea. It, it, it's, it's, it's between the devil and the deep blue sea. There the, mm. the really isn't much left for the people. Mm. The hopeless situation, the hopelessness that we feel. Um, I will be more than happy to have you there as my guest. Whenever you're ready to come and see what's going on, okay. it's almost as if um, we are not appreciating the the the, the seriousness of the problem. Hmm. If people were not able to take care of themselves adequately when the borders were open, and the borders have been closed, and they are struggling, and then the sea attacks them, and as we speak, as we speak, um, the regional minister is aware. The MC is aware, mm. the national coordinator is aware, they've all been there. These three people that I've mentioned have all been there. Right. My, 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 my hope is that um, in the situation, I would expect that they would bring immediate relief, some mm. kind of relief to the people. Mm. No matter how small it is, no matter how small it is, by now, Mm. Somebody should have provided the kinds of things that NADMO always provides when that there's a disaster. Uh, are you there's saying? Are you saying? Disaster. Sorry, are you saying, uh, Madam, that up until now nobody has brought them shelter, rice, oil, the regular things we see NADMO deliver to? Uh, none. Wow. None. The, there's a company in the community mm. that ha has sent some relief on their own, and this is, I think, the last time it happened before uh, this one. Mm. And then it's been zero, nothing, mm. nobody, nobody, nobody has made the effort to send them something to rely on as we wait for the big things to be done. The homes, the homes you saw uh, with Honorable Atacha, who was Minister for Works and Housing in 2017, 
coupled with what already had gone and what's been affected now. If you put them in sum, how many homes or families are we talking about? This last one, we lost about 20 homes. And mm. the, the one in 2017, I lost, I've lost count of, I've lost uh, the figure. Mm. Um, my memory shows me now, um, <laughs> but the current one, we lost about 20 houses. Mm. Um, and so apart from the houses that have been lost are other things on the stretch. Okay. You know, so um, listen, it, it's terrible. It's terrible. Um, I could I could feed you with the figure, right. the, the number of homes that were lost in, in 2017 when I, I, I I'll, I'll be happy I for that. There. Yeah, what, yeah. what kinds of conversation have the people been having since you, you've been there? You've been there consistently. What kind of conversation have they been having among themselves? Desperation, fear. Um, it's, it's, it's so depressing. I don't even have the words to describe what they say to me in our language. Ni honami la, mama ni honami. Mama, uh, you all should just come to our aid. Mm. Save mm. us, rescue mm. us. It, it, it's, um, I, I'm hoping that uh, we, won't, we won't be, be hedging and hide, hiding behind we are dealing with it. No, mm. this is the time to deal with it. It's heavy uh, um, infrastructure. Mm. It, it needs a lot of money. Mm. I understand. But we can do it. We can do it. We find money to do a lot of things that are capital intensive. This is one of them. Let's find the money. Mm. Let's find the money and save the lives of the people. If, if this, the state takes the road, mm. it's going to hit into the, the other part. So what we are looking at is not just a small group of people, no. Mm -hmm. The cost of that road, which may go, and try to find another to link the two communities, which is the, the two constituencies, Kutu South and Kata, will be more. So let's, let, and, and when, when that happens, it will cut off water supply and electricity to uh, adjoining communities. Mm. This, is, it, this is terrifying. This is terrifying. And, and please, I don't want to hear things about, uh, and we didn't do this, and we didn't do that. Let's deal with it now. Mm. So the reason why we didn't do it yesterday is the reason why we should do it now. Right. The reason why I, I had to rewrite my old level is because I failed the first one. Mm. So because I saw the first one, shouldn't I try again? I did try. And I passed the second one. Right. So I, I don't want to hear this. Um, it, it wasn't done before. It was, so what? So I should look on while people suffer. In 2017, when I responded to the call, I was not in government. But I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an indigenous of the place. Right. I am Mama Jamadou Bato. So when they called me, Mama E hey, Chidanilo, I ran there. Let's deal with the situation. Let's save the people. And um, no excuse is good enough. No excuse is good enough. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Mama Jamado. The first, uh, she's also the member of parliament for the Ketu South constituency in the Volta region. Grateful that you could uh, join us. Uh, this is a special good morning to you, Dr. Archibald Yao Lecha, your regional minister for the Volta region. I'm told you're aware of this situation very much so. And you've been a regional minister since 2017. You are still in charge. Uh, my very good friend, Dr. Uh, Yao Lecha, please, the people out there uh, around the Agavidji area are calling on you. Our friends at NADBO, National Disaster Management Organization, they are calling for release. Please go there and, and let's see how we can all fix this. Uh, DC, good morning to you. You went there in 2018 with um, Richard Ahiagba. Duty is calling again. Please go out there and go and save lives and help uh, maintain livelihoods and also preserve body and soul together. Elikem, you had an intervention. Let me give you one minute. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I thought that Mama had put uh, the seal on it, but yeah, just a minute. let me okay. give you a minute. It's, and then it's let's most discuss. unfortunate that my brother would suggest that we are belittling the matter with the submissions that I made. It is not only out of emotions, but it's born out of the fact that we have failed as a people. And if a regime would be photoshopping images taken from the South Asian Sea to show you and I that this is progress on that work when it's actually false. 
Another one is even one gentleman called Elikem. I would have to mention it's Elikem here or something, who also was showing images that progress on the uh, the, the, the port the port project, which mm. was also another palpable falsehood. So you have people from within your own regime who are apostles of the regime trying to purport to you and I that these are progress on such projects. You abandoned, you neglected it. And therefore, you see, my brother could not tell that he could make a call to okay. anybody. Well, that is happening under this regime. The systems are not working. So it takes calls. And that is the essence of power. If you are actually within power, you are not supposed to twist somebody's hands, but to make an appeal that there's a situation that requires urgent I, I, attention. I think that we all agree that it's, this is an urgent matter that exactly. requires immediate fixing. Exactly. So, so that is why at least just a call that, hey, Please, if you are not aware, this is it. I think a little call from your end also may help the situation. But to say that you cannot or not be... So the systems must work. You see, are the systems really working? Are well, the systems your really thoughts working? and comments, as always, uh, join us. Our WhatsApp line is active. Richard, you... Know, you... That's a quick thing. The reason the system... <laughs> yeah, and no, 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 no. <laughs> the, the reason the system might not be working mm. is they are being jump and people are used to wanting to jump the system. Once you said it, let it work. We made a call here. Uh, NADMO must hear it. Mm. They know the urgency of the matter. They have been there. Mm -hmm. Okay? The MCE you just mentioned is from the area. Mm -hmm. In fact, the area that is being ravaged is from that area. So I am, I am fully aware mm -hmm. that he is working with the regional minister and all the, uh, the uh, agencies allied to mm -hmm. it to make sure that the people see comfort. We but pray, as far pray, as pray, the pray. project is concerned, Johnny, mm -hmm. the scope is huge. And I'm, I'm happy Mama alluded to that. It's huge. It's mm. almost as if you are contending the, the, the sea. Right. It's a huge program. If project. we have started once earlier, you finish, sure we no, have. no, it's not even mm. about starting earlier. It's a school. Because mm. once you finish and you stop, mm -hmm. the next place the next you stop be, at okay. begins to be ravaged. Mm. So you take this thing all the way to Aflau to border. And when you cross Togo, you leave it for them. But would they be willing? You just ship the, the burden the onto to them. them. Mm. So it's something that requires a lot of dialogue and engagement, not only even money. So it's, it's something that is urgent, but need time to undertake. So we need to be objective. Well, well, while we out. wait, what happens to the people? I'm, I'm worried that up until now, they don't have any, any kind of relief. I'm worried. Well, Blankets, beds, tents, chalewati, buckets, food. At this time, it should have been there like three days ago. Be. Johnny, we have a district NADMO office. Right. Do they have that the supplies? The, that is in the <laughs> eye is of the, the storm. Mm. I, I will get right after here, find out from him. Yes, that's the call I was asking. No, no, I'm just saying, no, no. It, yeah, when, when you're saying make a call, it's like you want to jump. No, 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 no. I'm I'll find to make out. A call. Please, please, no. please. Mm. Your understanding is different from my understanding. <laughs> okay. I am saying that. I don't want to disturb the balance of the system. The system must work. You no, don't have to. I'm not, because, I'm because, not asking you, Richard. Slow down. So what slow I'm down. telling you, you are is that we'll you are impugning motive. <laughs> Hold on. You are impugning motive that I'm asking you to jump start. What you just said now, that you know the district NADMO people, yes. is exactly what I was asking you to do 20 minutes Johnny, ago. Johnny, no, no. The district NADMO is in the eye of the storm. So if I'm sitting in Accra and you are the one to call them, mm. then you are trying to jump. They are in the system. Okay. They are there do where they the thing the is supplies? happening. So that's what we need to find out. Uh -huh. But it's not a so call. That's what I was asking you to make the call. You, it's okay. I, I hear you. Now I'm happy that you make the call. My brother. I'm not saying I'm making a call. In a sense, you are trying <laughs> oh, to, make it, to, to make as if people associated with government back. are just calling for... Uh, no, I don't want that. But you I make want the, the call system to work... To find well, out why the money has... everyone let in this country. Known. That's my thinking. Let okay. It. No, we're, we're finished on this matter. No, Thank I just you. wish to let you know that the Togolese have actually completed doing their bit of the defense. Okay. Uh, yes. So let, let's not put, make it as if uh, there's a challenge of we having to do it and leave it for the pressure on them. No, the Togolese are done with it. So they are done with that. They are done with it. So maybe that's, so that's that, why the president. So there's no pressure. No. So, so they are done with theirs. So How, we should. According to who? To go, to go have done theirs. No, according to who? To, oh, according to me. The last time I was there was <laughs> even before, 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 <laughs> before COVID. And I've got friends as well. You know, wow. interesting is one has just even sent me the same, same, okay. same, same message. All right. We, we Let, let's. Just, uh, are you going to go there? When you go, let me come. I'll show you. There. We will go there. Yes, yes, I walk all the way to Togo. What we'll do you mean? We'll we'll in fact, I did my see, in twenty in two thousand and eight. Anyway, Ketu North and Ketu South was where I did my election reporting from. Two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. Yes. Some of these. That's where I did are, my reporting. Do not necessarily from. So a whole extension I have, of I have an eye on the area, a, a bit of it. Yeah. Anyway, so free SHS has 
reversed decades of exclusion. That's according to President Takufuado. And he is talking about the fact that Free SHS has done the most. Elikem, let me begin yeah. this conversation with you. Um, we agree the role that Free SHS has played, but some are also raising concerns about the president not talking about, if you like, a few of the hiccups and negatives that have been recorded. Recently, I heard Dr. Clement Park talking about some challenges, and he says that the media is silent on it. And I asked him, well, you are the ranking member on the Education Committee. You should also be speaking about it in Parliament. Yeah. But what do you say to what the president has said? Yeah, I, I think uh, one cannot rule out the fact that the, the project Free SHS mm -hmm. has come with some benefits. Mm -hmm. But it appears the challenges that is confronting us as a result of the Free SHS mm -hmm. has become much more or more than the benefits. Mm. And it is most unfortunate that you will have the president who will be speaking to that and will not man up enough to be bold to admit that there are challenges or some failures that ought to be to be looked at. Mm. Critical that is worthy of mention is the fact that you recall when former President Mahama and the NDC and other Ghanaians were uh, made submissions that there was need for a review mm -hmm to uh, the, the free SHS. It was misconstrued by the entire NPP machinery mm -hmm. to mean that review meant cancellation or to collapse, and President Mahama intended to collapse that. In recent times, we have had submissions by or calling to programs and other submissions by well-meaning Ghanaians, mm -hmm. stakeholders, that are also calling again for the same review that was mentioned, which was misconstrued by their failure to appreciate English, or their deliberate attempt. Are you not being too harsh? No, mm. it's either a failure to appreciate what review meant, mm. or a deliberate propaganda attempt to just rubbish it off. But now here it is staring us in the face. And I'm told the president made that submission at UCC. That's right. I, I love the UCC management for one thing they did. Why? Did you realize at the background of where President Anado was being conferred the mm. doctorate degree, mm. there was a very significant image at the back at his back, which which, uh, which, is? which said uh, ongoing educational projects. Yeah, infrastructure. And it was infrastructure projects, mm. and it was none other than the e blocks that. Uh, President Mahama started under the NDC regime, which they have abandoned. Oh, I see. And, 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 and are using some for <laughs> hostels, amongst other things. And I think communication is key. There were times where probably you but, may but tie... But the e-block projects are ongoing. I mean, it's, it's, it's on the front page of the daily guide. You, you, may, you <laughs> may tie the hands of people sometimes, but I think communication... I, I love that subtle demonstration that there's need for us to relook really at that because that is a project that has been abandoned mm -hmm. and having put it there at the background of the president if they know what it means the management is just telling you look these are projects that will be that you need to look at and there's need for us to to, to pay attention to that mm -hmm. you see free education or free shs alone is not enough the mm -hmm. quality matters access and the resource that is uh, associated with it because i learned some days ago that uh, some students or some badge have got, went to school for 39 days mm -hmm. and are going to be home for 93 days. How true it is, I don't know. But that, it, that's the formal goal track. Yes, mm. and you see, and these are worrying times. Mm. The major concern is that the challenges that will be confronting us as a result of the probable drop in quality of the education is that in the next five years or a decade or two. When probably the NPP is not in power, President Nanado is not in power, or he may not, all things being equal, even be alive, that is when we'll be seeing the very bad effects of some of these things that have affected us. Mm -hmm. And it is not only the NDC talking about it. We've had, listened to discussions on radio and TV where mm -hmm. parents even call in and say, look, I would prefer to pay school fees and have my sound mind, have this, have that, because they can see the challenges that are ongoing. If you are a principal of an institution or a head of an institution and you try to talk too much, to, you are immediately dealt with in, in one way or the other. The, the, there's a, a center that's been created for headmasters and headmistresses to channel their yes. challenges there. Uh, but to, to also suggest that, well, because there are challenges, then we must give the project a bad name may not be the best. No, right? and that is why I, I premised my submission on the fact that free SHS is a good thing. And it is one thing we must always make clear. The NDC never said it was not. But our concern has been some of these challenges mm. that we are confronted with today. Mm. The NDC made it clear that free SHS is good. But then timing was key. You recall when even their own, uh, uh, the former president, Kufo's younger brother, 
Mm. Uh, Adobe Adobe and, and co Adobe told Fou. us that, look, the timing, it was not the best and mm. all that. That is because it was ill thought through. Mm. It wasn't well thought through. It, let's, let's rehash it as a, uh, as a policy or as a, as a campaign message. And you recall how the president became a stammerer on mm. BBC, the mm. costing, the costing, the costing. And today we've not been told the costing, but we keep incurring a lot of costs associated with it because there has not been proper planning. And once there has not been proper planning, we'll be confronted with this. It is one of the reasons why the president has not been man enough to actually own up to even admit for once that there are challenges with the free SHS and there's need okay. for us to review. Because calling for the review or admission of the need mm. for review meant that it vindicates exactly what President Mahama said at okay. the time. Let, let, uh, which is stepping for me. So the president is exalting free SHS, but Elikem insists that there are challenges that the president could also have spoken about in, in the midst of the praise, you could have mentioned some of those challenges. Fair point. Johnny, the way I, I went through secondary school, mm -hmm. you would never hear my father at the time was, was passed mm -hmm. at the time, but my mother, mm -hmm. you would never hear my mother saying that she will have peace of mind mm -hmm. if I pay school fees. She would have loved free SHS for me. I struggled. Mm -hmm. So today when I see people who conveniently sit in TV studios and are talking about these things, it shocks me. How? Because that is an essential lifeline that is being given to people. Hmm. Many years ago when I sat in classroom to learn public policy, a shocking conversation that in planning public policy, there is a certain critical number of people called hmm. the marginal publics whose interests are not catered for in public policy. Hmm. Free SHS took those people and brought them into the main. Mm. Free SHS took care of the marginal publics. I'm telling you, essential life matter. If you've never been there, don't talk about it. Mm. Okay? Can you ever have a perfect situation? You can't. Free SHS is an ongoing project. Mm. It must be fixed, but it's essential. Let's acknowledge that. I don't have a problem. He acknowledged Let's, that. No, no, no. Please, please, please. This, uh, Alain, he no, acknowledged that. If, if you agree mm. to the essence of free SHS, your conversation and your communication around it is, doesn't sound like this. You talk about what aspect must be improved. Right. And you engage it in appreciation because you know what it is doing. But, but, so all these things people are doing and faking around, mm. we agree free SHS, and then they are talking around condemning the thing and undermining it. I find it repulsive because really there is a, it's a little boy somewhere mm. whose lifeline, there are people making it. And Sh we'll shouldn't, make it shouldn't the president, the shouldn't the president so, himself? So, so let's not get to this space. So shouldn't the president himself have set the tone for, if you like, those kinds of conversations that are meant to make free SHS better mm -hmm. on that stage? Because all he sang was praise about the free SHS program, but not acknowledging that there were challenges is, is, is this in itself problematic. Don't Johnny, you agree? Johnny. There's a reason in your Bible. It mm. says that in all things... In our give, Bible. Yes, mm. yes. Well, you, you said my government minutes ago. Wasn't it okay? The Bible is for all of us. <laughs> but our government, <laughs> this government is not for all of us. It says that in all things, give thanks. That's right. It's not an assumption that things will be fine. Mm. Or everything is fine. That logic must be present. Okay. Free SHS, we appreciate it. I, for one, I appreciate it for other people. I'm not benefiting from it. Mm. But I appreciate it for the many people who are out there, but for free SHS. The marginal public that has been brought into the main by free SHS, I appreciate it for them. It is our responsibility to find ways to do it, but let's not pretend and be castigating the thing and so, saying so we're making it. you have not answered it. my question. I'm saying that if we want to have a fair assessment, praise is good, and where praise is due, you must give it. But acknowledging the challenges on that big platform as well could have gone a long way to prevent Elikem, for example, or preclude him from uh, talking about the things that he is highlighting now instead of the priest. Well, Johnny, Don't you agree? Your, your question in retrospect is asking me to rewrite or write the president's speech. I can't do that. No, I'm the, not asking. What, I'm asking you to, to, to what, read what the, the, what the president said was very clear <laughs> mm. and say that he's trying to draw us to a conversation that is constructive, okay. a conversation that is forward-looking, mm. to say that let's move away from the pretense mm. and embrace the, 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 pro, the program and then work at it. Can we do that without looking at the pros and cons? I'm saying there is a mindset that must be present. That mindset is absent. Okay. People are using this for their politics. Okay. 
instead of looking at it as an essential government policy that has beneficial outcomes does, for our children. Does government and then appreciate, from that place, does government we'll appreciate it. the the bottlenecks or if you like the challenges that are being highlighted? Does well, government of course, appreciate of them? course, and government is investing money every you time know. to fix those. Okay. You know, no, no, Eli, we, we, no, we, our time is it, up. Yeah, but but I'll read, I'll read something from page three, and then we'll wrap up. Also on the UCC, uh, the conferment of the okay. PhD on the president it says, um, the president said, and for me personally, I find it ironic that the presidency of a man who has been and continues to be the most vilified political figure of his generation can be accused of presiding over a culture of silence. There is no midnight knock on the door in Ghana for authors of dissenting views, and nor will there be during my presidency. That's one. The second one, it says, since becoming president, there is nothing I have seen or experienced in the office that will make me change my longstanding view on the importance of the fundamental human rights. I had worked with civil society organizations and used their platforms to engage in famous arguments. Indeed, I still enjoy healthy debate and I'm not averse to the occasional controversy that is not that is a necessity a necessary part of my public life. So this is what the president says, shooting down the proposition that there's culture of silence around us. And he says that he's the most vilified. Uh, of all our presidents. What do you say in wrapping up? I mean, I think unless the vilification he's talking about has a different interpretation, you and I do not understand. You recall when then candidate Akufuado went out of this country to even go tell the world that mm. the price of, uh, was it potato or plantain or food shortage in Ghana? You recall when they were making comments that were very reckless to suggest mm. that even presidential diaries that was printed under President Mahama was 10 million. He is president today, and what a hypocrite he has become. I'm so sorry, but that is the truth. He's not been able to prove that President Mohammed's error. We printed diaries that were 10 million. Those were submissions made by then desperate candidate at the time. I'm glad this fits into the, the same narrative when the president again says that it's in response to uh, 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 some Jonas' uh, submission right. on the mm -hmm. culture of silence. The president's understanding, again, I'm sorry, is limited when he thinks that the culture of silence is only when people are knocking on doors at midnight. Did he hear of Ahmed Suarez's death? Did he not know of uh, how Manasseh Azuri was hounded? How about Edward uh, Adeti? Mm. Uh, recently, uh, 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 how do you call him? Um, uh, Caleb Kuda and mm. Zoe Abu Bedu. Is he not aware of that? So if he is very aware of matters of this nature and could talk to them, but has not got the balls once again to be able to speak to those you're, things. You're, you're going too far. I'm, I'm sorry, does not, sorry, does not man up enough mm. again to, to tell us that, look, I am also aware of some of these actions that were against some of you, the media. It is bad because he made a submission there that a particular radio station is, is, is began a campaign against free SHS. That right. is a president that is not allowing dissenting views, and it is most unfortunate that he will want to tout his prowess or his uh, legal, what have you, but will not admit. See, what is the essence of radio stations or TV stations having discussions? Now, when the president comes out to say that there's a radio station with an agenda to, to run down the free SHS, he is trying to even tell you already that any other radio station that wants to have a discussion on free SHS will not be entertained. Because why do you think that such policies should not be discussed on radio stations? There are challenges. Like you were saying, had he man up enough to say that I admit as president that there are some challenges, this, this, and that, it would have taken the wind out of the sail of many. And that would mean that, okay, the president himself so has admitted. So you believe that contrary to what the president says, there is culture of silence? There is. And you see, the culture of silence is not about you saying that there are knocks on people's door to question them about what they utter and all that. Mm. You may not even admit it publicly here, but we are all aware of sometimes when even stories are written and people are called to, 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 be, to be told, hey, we played pull this down or do this. Have there not been stories we saw on some portals and within a twinkle of an eye, they are pulled down and all that? So it is not about just knocking on doors. I have given you some examples mm. of uh, Adeti uh, and, and uh, Manasse, uh, Ahmed Swale, uh, Kaleb Kuda, and all that. What okay. uh, even Umar Sanda all okay. went through. That is what we so are talking about. So you say the about. president got it wrong? He got it very wrong. He Richard, didn't understand what he was saying. Did the president get it right? Is there a culture of silence? <laughs> the president says he's the most vilified, is he? Well, I leave that to your judgment. No, no, I, you I, tell me. You, you, I, I, you I leave that. I, if you disagree, tell me. Because I agree. I, I don't Look, have a Johnny, judgment. Very ironic. You see how my brother was talking very profusely and there's culture of silence in this country. Very ironic. That's a misunderstanding of the culture Pop of silence. Please, allow him, allow him. <laughs> very, very. I mean, even to the, the words he's mentioned, it's shocking to you in the studio. That's culture of silence. There's too much noise.
to, to claim culture of silence in this country. Look, the midnight lock the president is talking about, go back hmm, in, is it in, in President Kufour's, I think it's 2001 or so, mm. was lifted when the criminal libel law 2001. was 2001. Mm. Criminal libel law was repealed. That was a midnight lock. It's been lifted and you cannot, in good conscience, in this country, say there's any culture but of can silence. you compare a democratic rule to a military rule? I'm saying, well, of course, the what? lifting of the midnight lock manifest in the repeal of the criminal libel law mm. opens the floodgate. So it's not about comparing it, it's about showing you where we have been and where we are. Okay. So you cannot compare the two. Okay, Richard Ahiagba is the executive director of the Dankwa Institute there, a think tank, and uh, he's here with me this morning after a long time. And also Elikem Kotoko is the, uh, a member of the NDC's national communication team. He joined me here in studio in this resplendent um, Matakari. This is a passionate appeal to the minister for the Volta region, Dr. Archibald Yaolecha. Good morning to you, uh, Togwiga, and uh, we wish that the folks around the Agaveji area will see some relief soon. Good morning to you, Nadbo Boss in the Ketu um, South District. Also, good morning to you, uh, Honorable Abladifa Gumash. I know you've been there over and over again. And Richard says he will make a call, by the way. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we are looking forward to the call and the we help. Um, um, <laughs> maybe Richard doesn't want to he make a promise. To maybe Richard time. doesn't want to make a promise he can't keep. <laughs> so, but today is a birthday of uh, Evil, Nyameche Saki. It's your birthday today, little Evil. Happy birthday. Live long and stay blessed. Also, happy birthday to Mr. Daniel Kosi Dunyo Deroski. It's your birthday today. And a big one to Foster Bafo. He's a commissioner of Ghana's strongest contest, the long standing commissioner of Ghana's uh, strongest, popularly known as Shotos. It's your birthday today. Happy birthday, macho man, and uh, live long. John sent this one. It's our final one. I'll read that quickly and then we will uh, get off your set for uh, another segment. So the president of the day has never accepted any challenge with his government. Insecurities in Ghana, he has denied it. Failed Galamsey fights, denied. Free SHS Wahala, denied. Corruption, denied. Culture of silence, denied, denied, denied. No wonder we are where we are. Massa, good morning. Don't deny me. Okay, I won't deny you. We'll see you after the break. <laughs>